YouTube, what's going on? We got a big stack of cars we're going to look at and some trucks. So this will be a longer session with the cars, but uh, we'll probably see a lot of cool stuff. And just been busy, but cars have not stopped coming in. And we're going to take a look at some. Some of these vehicles might have been out for a little bit, and some of them definitely noteworthy for my collection. So we're going to take a look, especially the trucks. I love them. We got all the brands. We got Johnny Lightning, Auto World, M2, and Green Light. So I didn't, I couldn't segregate it because I didn't have enough for each brand, but I had a whole bunch from each, I guess you'd say. So we'll have a really cool little smattering of all the different diecast brands. Well, I found these at a store. And these are about a 2019 release. <clears throat> We're gonna look at some Johnny Lightning stuff. I usually don't get these too much, but sometimes, as we talked before on the channel. I do like some of their castings. Uh, this is kind of a hard casting, just in general. So, I'm a very big fan of these in real life. This is a 61 bubble top Chevy. And it's done in some really cool cars. I've been starting to get partial to black and red cars. They look pretty slick. This has the fake kind of dog dish look. We'll take a look at that closer. But not too many 61 bubble top Impalas. So we'll take a look. They had a four-door station wagon on this car. Coupe and convertible. Basically, you could get every body style of car you wanted in this vehicle. So here it is. Um, this is metal. Sometimes Auto World brands like them and Greenlight, this will be like a plastic piece that leaves them open to use the casting as a convertible or a coupe. But this one's a real dedicated hard top car. It's got separate molding for the trunk and for the hood, but I don't seem to open them. They don't seem to open. I seem riveted. So we've seen that type of construction with green light. So we did get the hood open. And that's the first time I've done this. So if it gives easily, we'll, we'll take a look. So I don't want to bust anything off. Some of these cars aren't going to get messed with. So this is supposed to be a, I think an SS. Yeah, so SS409 car, so very famous car, very dominating in the early 60s uh, with this motor. I think Chrysler was pretty heavy uh, late 50s and 60, and then uh, Chevy was pretty heavy duty too, and their big blocks are great. The 409 was fairly new in 61, I don't know if it was debuted in 61 or thereabouts, but uh, they call this a W series motor because of those classic head design, you can kind of see it in the the light here where it kind of curves in and out so it had that characteristic valve rocker cover and a uh, special order car but the 409 wasn't an expensive car I mean it was definitely a lot of money for then but regular people could afford them and this casting is pretty good it's got the Johnny Lightning stance meaning that the tires a little bit big and they do chassis where that's narrow here like a like a matchbox or a Hot Wheels would look like. But the body's fairly decent. Um, they did do the nice thin pillars. They got a detailed interior. Let's go see this. And I think I've tried opening this before. I think it was the trunk that didn't want to do anything. So, trunk's fixed. I do like that the taillights are separate. That's kind of cool. These were those bullet taillights on the 61 like this with the 3. Uh, I think it went down to 2 on lesser models like... Um, a Biscayne, for instance. So, they did have different trim lines of this car, and Pala being the most optioned, typically. And the grill is decent. It's not perfect. It almost reminds me of a Ford grill. It does look like a 60s, early 64. It's like a 63, 64 Galaxy grill. <laughs> um, and then the, the, the tire. So, two-piece design, and then a rubber tire that fits them together might not put this back together but you'll have that little backing plate axle much like the mainline Hot Wheels and then you'll have the hubcap in there so <clears throat> these are fun because sometimes these tires fit with better with different brands like Greenlight and All World it's a narrower gauge so this tire is more delicate it'll look good like more on like a classic car if you need a narrow tire not those fat ones these cars are good for tire swaps 
plus the red lines look good. They don't completely fill out the rim. The rim's a little bit small in the tire, so again, a lot of times you'll see through the tire into the base of the wheel there. And again, these are kind of like the, it's a steel wheel that they chrome the center. There is no hubcap there. It's just kind of fooling the eye. But back there, it looks decent. 164 scale car, but it's not the most expensive thing in the world. So there we go, Impala. I won't spend too much time on it, but it is a cool casting, and I don't really have this. I mean, Hot Wheels does this car, uh, although I don't know if it's a 61. I think it's a 60. But anyway, there we go. So there's our first car, M2. And then, um, again, this release on the back says... Uh, can't even find it. 2020, so recent. I should have just let everybody screenshot that. So here's the back of the car. Here's your UPC code. Uh, vehicles in there. Tiger. I've seen that casting. It's quite large. I mean, the Tiger is a small car. I'd, I'd like to see someone in one of the premium, other premium brands, because Johnny Lightning is basically the price of a premium. Um, to do that justice, because some Bean Tigers are great cars. They're little British cars, basically. If you don't know them. With small block Ford V8s in them. So really fun car to drive around and dream about. Because it is a quite a cool car. Alright, so we're going to take a look at two more Johnnies. And then uh, we're going to move on to Auto World. Which is their... Now they're all under the same umbrella, of course. So really, they should follow each other. So I got a pair of Vegas. Uh, these are 2019, 2018 cars, releases, something like that. So I saw these. And... Uh, they make a lot of Vegas. They make the um, panel van Vega, which was like a like a two door station wagon with no windows. We've got two different wheel variants on these, but they're from the same series. The release uh, B. There's B and A. Of course, green. I had to get that, and then I saw this one behind it, and I said these are pretty cool. And then the thing about Johnny Lightning that I like too. Uh, some of the castings are great, but they got very low um, release numbers, so that's kind of cool too. <clears throat> Alright, let's take a look at them. We got a gulf green poly car and a pewter silver poly, so two metallic colors. These are 72 models. Um, I didn't brush up on my Vega stuff, but they offered a cool version of this. There was a Cosworth Vega, very infamous car in the GM community, but... It was a real screamer. Um, like it says on the packaging, um, I'll just do the screenshot of the, of the version A, but um, talk about the rust. And Yeah, these cars rust pretty poorly. They were starting to get into designing these bodies with a little bit less sheet metal and things like that, but they weren't coating them correctly, and the drain draining and everything wasn't um, state-of-the-art where it is today. So... You know, these cars are made like the more modern cars with the thinner gauges and all that nonsense, but they weren't uh, doing the metal or the coatings and things yet, so they routed a little bit, And but they still are very popular with everybody. Um, great power-to-weight ratio. It is a rear-wheel drive vehicle, and um, I don't think factory V8 was offered. I can't remember. Someone in the comments comment on that, but definitely six and four cylinders, I believe. Four cylinder on the Cosworth motor, so it was like a black and gold uh, coupe Vega like this, and basically had a really hotted up four cylinders, really cool looking car. Um, but drag racers, you put eight cylinder in this car, uh, put some good meat on the back, and have the suspension set up correctly. This is a very fast and deadly vehicle. Um, for drag racing so very popular and I always forget this but you have the European style bonnet Let's See if this will open so we have the reverse Hood which is that was the way it was and you can see there's a little four cylinder in there Pretty sure they offered a six. I don't think factory eight. I, I, they had a Yanko version of this car. I believe Things like that. This is a 72. I don't know if they came out in 72 or 70 can't remember. Of course, you know, they were kind of having these little miniature car wars in the 70s at the Pinto and the Comet and all those other vehicles. So, 
this fit right in. I like the Vega the way it looked. I definitely like these wheels better than these. I flipped this around so you'll see this car on the pegs with white walls. White walls were executed poorly on this model. It was very, um, wasn't concentric. Uh, you can see on this one, it's pretty poor. So I can't watch that. It just bothers me. So we flipped them. And I don't think I'd run white walls on a car like that anyway. And they got the contrasting uh, center body stripe. So I thought that was cool. So really cool car. And they got the divided taillights. Kind of like, I think Ford had it like that too. So it's very similar looking vehicles. Black interior, white. I love it. So there we go. I won't spend too much time. And again, also with Johnny Lightning, a lot of times their cars roll very nicely. Because they are on that axle system. The only reason they would do that wobble is you got to get in there and the tire sometimes has a little bit too much um, flashing. You just got to chew it up. But other than that, it's pretty cool. And, you know, under Auto World's stewardship, the tampering and the paint jobs and all that's been pretty decent. A lot of these cars in the day, if these were older castings, um, they had the plastic wheels and tires. They wouldn't even have the rubber stuff. So that was a good addition. And, of course, the tampo work got neatened up and tightened up. I think that looks a lot better. So Johnny Lightning's starting to come around a little bit for me. It's not definitely not a focus, but, you know, Vega's a good good casting. All right, so we're going to do two Fords. Like, for some reason, I don't necessarily have to have these Fords, but I like them. I got them. I'm starting to pile up the F-150 castings with my Auto Worlds. It is a great, solid casting. It's a really good casting of this truck. Um, very accurate. So I get them when I see them, and, and they seem to be quote-unquote peg warmers. I mean, they'll last longer than the rest of the Auto World stuff, typically, unless there's like some old repeat, like a, I don't know, like a one of those old Chrysler cars that they keep putting out. So this is... One of the more recent series, of course, we're on this next one or next one even after that from this that it's available. But this is fairly recent, and, and again, I wait. I try to wait. I, I, I am lucky enough to have a couple of retail places that stock these on the shelves, and they're much cheaper than trying to find them. So I just play the waiting game, and I seem to get up and find them, especially with, you know, these increasing numbers that they're made, so... They give us a chance, and there's your vehicle. So I got the silver and then the black a little bit later on. I definitely wanted the black anyway. I did like that. Um, I have to get another one of these, then I'll explain why <laughs> it made it. So let's take it out. We'll do a few so overview. We've looked at these cars before. We've had them in the collection of other videos. Um, you know, they're all mostly solid color ones. This is the first one's kind of like the sport package, or what do they call this? Because, you know, Ford and pickup trucks in America, they always have all these little additions every year. Um, it's just a sport. So XLT with a sport package. It's got a graphics package. This would be factory. You know, in regionally and in dealership specific, you know, some dealers will change vehicles and sell them brand new with warranty and everything. They'll do different things to them, so... It's unusual to have very rare limited edition vehicles even to this day. But this is a little more, more wide release. Ford did, did this. And they put this graphics package on. Um, still using, I think, the 5 liter motor casting. They haven't done the twin turbo 6 cylinder. A lot of times when these Fords are produced with Auto World, they always have a lot of slop in the axles, so that's one of the things I make the attention first. There's not a lot of cleanup on these that really need to happen, though. <clears throat> so, they are great. Uh, besides from that, and just kind of trimming the, the flashing off the tires, there's always some flashing hanging around. You can see there on that one. That rear one there. Oop. There we go. So... Just stuff like that, but they're usually pretty true. Sometimes I'll pull them off the axle completely and fix it. A lot of times I have luck putting the truck in the vise and just slowly squeezing on the bench. The little one, the hobby vise, not the huge one. Let's say I'll be, I'd smash this thing in two uh, if it was on the big one. So kind of cool. Headlights are kind of a disappointment and not a lot of activity going on with those headlights. They look kind of... Um, dull a lot of these modern fords especially the new ones they'll have the led strip that goes around and all that so a lot of people when customize these trucks they'll 
they'll paint this black and then they'll fill it in with a, like a zero brush. This one has that casting issue starting to show up right here. But, uh, you know, best in the business for hood fitment is Auto World. I mean, you could see the gap there. I mean, it looks like OE gap. <laughs> like, like an actual, like, 164 scale gap is right there. So, kudos for that. And tailgate. So, that's why I kind of like, mechanically and, and technically, this, this casting is really cool. Even though the subject material is kind of mundane. But that's what we like. I think a lot of die cast people like the average. They like seeing the, the cars they see every day in scale. I think a lot of us agree with that. But, yeah, I mean, even the bed's good. So this is all metal, and they do the flat black really great. A lot of the times now these modern trucks will have an auto tailgate even. So metal base, gloss, there's your production date. Tires are great. So this one I haven't touched. This one, unfortunately, I did. And I usually don't make mistakes like that, but I did with this. I probably was rushing. What all the other Fords I got, I was able to squeeze them in the vise. This one I did. I definitely screwed up the wheels, so I'm gonna have to find another one of these. I like to have them completely stock from the package, just with alterations, and then this one will probably turn into a custom. I looked at these wheels. I definitely flattened them. You can see the there's the stock one, and that's the one I smashed, and. I bent the axle, so I might have to rethink my recommendation or go slower next time. Typically, I've done them even with green light, and it's worked fine. I just take my time, and you have to spin the wheel a little bit as you're squeezing just so it doesn't put pressure on any one side. Make sure it's kind of square to the vise, but uh, this one didn't work out, so I think I had just a little bit too much to go, but the black is definitely better, I think, than the silver goes with the black wheels and you see this turns into more of like a ghost graphics where the flat vinyl of treatment would be done on the real truck so i mean i like it this is cool and then now it's starting to become like when you have them all in a row of all the ones that you collected uh, it's kind of be quite impressive uh number of one, <laughs> late model f-150s it's kind of funny Let's see if I can get that sport. This thing is just having a mind of its own today. Let's see. Well. Definitely wants to get the Vega in the background. We'll just go back. Alright. So, there we go. Kind of cool. Good truck. 5 liter V8. They do 10 speed automatics now, so... Quite impressive. Everybody's going to a 10 speed automatic. All right, now we're going to get into some more interesting auto world material, and then we're going to move right along. So we'll back up a little bit here, get a long shot of everything. So let's look at this square body. This is supposed to be 1980, and this is kind of a this is almost, I almost feel like I should have opened this up. So I found this on the pegs. I was almost about to get this online. Uh, just like the green light cars, I will jump on these online if I have to have it. I didn't need another square body per se. I have a lot, and this seems to be a style that's been done before. Although it is noteworthy because it's they're supposed to be their first 80. And we can see that the drawing is good. We have the kind of like a square headlight in that grill. But we still have the bump side fender okay well this truck is more like a 77 or a 78 or whatever we'll take a look and it's very similar to trucks we've seen before and what truck did we see well we saw this one before and it has a two-tone roof with the bull bar and this is the one i haven't corrected and this is the one i have corrected but anyway Let's take a look at the Auto World. So this is uh, Release 5 version B. And it is in a flat green. It's called the bright green, but it's very dark. It's a very dark green. And this release, I think, also has the other ones, like the Fords and stuff, and the um, Stealths, which I did find some Stealths, so we'll look at those. So let's look at this bad boy. I love the wheels and tires, looking good. We have the issue again with the front that I talked about before. There's way too much 
See, they, they do, it's too narrow. They really, I don't understand why they did it this way, but really the, the track should be this track for reasons unknown. I don't know why they did the chassis plate that way. It must have been just because of the way it fit on it there, whatever. But So you they leave the axle kind of where it needs to be. This one is uh, pushed in a little bit too much, but, um, you know, we got to bring these out. So this truck automatically needs to be uh, taking its wheels off and fixed. So but other than that, and here's one that I have repaired with the Auto World base. I just put spacers on it and then kind of true up the wheels. You can see their factory error there. That thing's all over the place. Uh, black. <laughs> but anyway... So that's what happened. I do like that it, they use the dog dish wheels. I like that better than the rallies. This is just personal preference. Let's see if this thing will get close. There we go. Custom Deluxe. So the bull board is kind of pushed in. That needs to be corrected. You can see it's all crooked. They kind of glue it into the base there. But the headlights are circular, so we saw that is the that is the main problem with this vehicle is they did the circular headlights and the I don't think the grill pattern is correct either, but that's the biggest thing. So really, it doesn't look like a 1980, even though this all this could be a 1980. The rest isn't so. That's the one problem, but if you forget that, we're okay. Now, if you want to get down in the comments and say, and I can't remember if it was like a heavy duty or whatever, so like 1980, maybe some of them got out with round headlights. I don't know. I don't know that much about it, but I do know that was kind of that, that one year only kind of front end looking thing. Maybe 81 was close, but there you go. So we got the bucket seat interior. They haven't done a bent seat still, so they've kind of put their foot in the sand and said, I'm not going that car, I'm not doing a bad seat, even though the truck would never have buckets. I mean, so most of these trucks wouldn't have the bucket seat. I mean, that was hard to get. Uh, it wasn't very common on these vehicles, so it's funny. So if, if you really want to do a swap, just get this guy, and there's your bench. So you can always make these trucks pretty accurate. There's, there's parts from all three companies that you can kind of put one together. All right, so there we go. Um, we've seen Stepside before. Although this is the first Auto World steps I lifted that I have in the collection. The other one on this series is black. And hopefully I come across that. It's unlikely in the wild that I'll find one. Uh, but if I do, we'll take a look at it. Alright. Let's get into some new material. We have Stealth. Dodge Stealth. This is like a Mitsubishi car. Um, that Chrysler was using their partnership with uh, Mitsubishi Motors. Which actually, you know, Zuzu too had people in the General Motors. So they it's all common for for them to share each other. Uh, really because it would give more stuff for GM to sell here that they didn't have to develop. And then they also gave the smaller companies uh, engineering and distribution, logistics, things like that. So it was kind of a good partnership. Like uh, some of the Chevys would get a Zuzu diesel engines, little four-cylinder diesels that would take forever for... The Americans that get caught up to speed with and vice versa, you know, distribution and getting their car sold here. They knew how to do a dealer network and all that. So this is kind of one of those things. This is an interesting car. So, you know, Dodge is going away. Everybody wanted to make these modern sports cars. They didn't want to do these old school muscle cars. So Ford was really ready to get rid of the Mustang and make it a Ford Probe, which all the enthusiasts shut that down. And Chrysler going the same way. They love that front wheel drive stuff. You know, they need to do it. Let's get some um, high output six cylinders. Let's get these six cylinders to do better in the V8s and all that. Well, this is the time. So this is we're supposed to be, what is this car? 91. So I think this car has developed the late 80s. And then and they already had Mitsubishi branded Chryslers, Dodges, Plymouths, Coupes, sporty stuff. Sold throughout the years, even from the 70s, really. So people were used to this kind of relationship, really. And, you know, this was going to be a real heavy-duty car. And, they, and the Mitsubishi 3000 GT as well, that this was also shared with. So I had like a 3-liter 6-cylinder. They made a turbocharged version. They made an all-wheel drive version. So these are stealth uh, RT cars, I believe. 
and they would be you know the fully loaded ones and all that so they were quite fast they were pretty high technology especially for the early 90s late 80s these cars were on tv back then i remember i remember the old viper tv show you'd see this car let's see all right so transverse mounted six cylinder i think it was a 24 valve motor and this looks like the the regular aspiration i can't tell i haven't looked at one of these engine bays in years you know in real life you could see the front cylinder head there and then they'd camp the other one behind the firewall and under this intake this could be the turbo setup i just can't i can't remember there's your intake runners there so that was cool so i mean again um this is auto world doing their their best doing the engine bays painting them giving them depth and character i mean they do that good this cow here so this windshield base i don't know if this is supposed to be i didn't look at a recent picture of these cars i don't know if it's supposed to be black or if that's body color it seemed to me like this would be black in here but you know and if i do find out that's the case i'll probably paint it the wheels are great um i haven't read if these were staggered i don't think they were staggered on these cars but you had that more modern low profile rubber that was starting to come into place in the 90s and the early 90s. You'd see that more and more at the radials. And it's got the very thin shape. A lot of these cars have been done in the past. I think there's been a few kind of thick. I think there was one that was done before. But really, this is really quite the only one, really, of recent memory. You got the, the, you know, they did that Pentastar center cap. That was kind of a nod to Chrysler. So that both interiors, red and blue car, are the same. This would have been, I think, a glass top. I can't remember. If that was an option, uh, comment below. I'm sure some of you drive this. And I have this funny spoiler um, on the car and then the flat, little flat deck. I have a snap kit of this, a 125th scale that you know came out when the car was brand new, which was a derivative of when there used to be a promo models where they, you know, get a plastic little car model of a car in the dealership but they they you know amt ertl had that and i had a bunch of those kits because i'd build the kits and play with them they were fun to play with but great you know gauge pot that's all 90 stuff driving these cars they're pretty quick i mean for the day it must have been mind-blowing definitely in the high 200 horses i think turbo car to get tuned up and all wheel drive it was a pretty good car i think it was quite complicated for a lot of people back then but now i think everyone gets it and they can probably work on this and figure it out but uh, they weren't produced forever i think you know this car probably was around for inside 10 years and it kind of went away uh, i always remember the last years in the late 90s of the 3000 gt mitsubishi and that car was awesome and it was a class to class the mitsubishi gto in, in, in asia and other other countries but i think it was a 3000 gt here Probably for licensing issues. You can see here the transverse setup here. And this is supposed to be the all-wheel drive car. So you kind of see this. You have your drive shaft. And then your, your your trailing suspension and your duals. But really, most cars, these duals were from a single. Which is very common. It's hard to run headers and stuff when you have this transverse mounted motor. You have all this plumbing under there for air conditioning all sorts of stuff. So... There you go, and probably had an intercooler. So here's the red one. Really cool, got good tires. I haven't played with the red one as much, as, or no, maybe the blue one. I can't remember which one I got first, but I think the red one I did, and I cleaned up the tire flashing so you could see how nicely it sits on the rims now. I think there's some gaps still on this one, and you can see the flashing on the inside of the tread. So that all got kind of cleaned up with this one. I still got to do a little bit more. I think that will help a lot. The other thing, too, the red one was sitting a little high. This back chassis wasn't completely riveted down, so you can see chassis protruding from under there. And it, I needed to squeeze it down a little bit. So this one that seems to be a better. And uh, you can also see the gap where the tailpipes are isn't so big. I think the registration actually was identical, which I thought was interesting. Let's see. Yeah. Look at that. So, is it? Seems like it is. So, interesting. 
So we look at these. Let's back it out a little bit. These are great cars. Definitely recommend it. You know, it's not my favorite car in the world. It, it's just noteworthy because of what it was back then. And so they're kind of cool to have. The, the white on white, I think I want that just because that was a special edition. So it'll have white wheels, white car, I think the white interior even. That'll be a cool one to have, and that will probably slow down after that. Unless I see him hanging around. It is tempting. You know, the prices you can get these cars is so much less than you have to buy them online that it's nice to just pick them up anyway because they're great. So there we go. Um, Stealth. Stealth. RT. Dodge. Green light stuff. Some M2. Then we're going to wrap it up. So seen this this is kind of a truck i looked at and, uh, i was like well should i get it online kind of like it then it came up uh locally on the pegs i did reverse the wheels uh they were white walls and again these were crooked so i had to flip them but i kind of like the look and this truck also probably would look good lifted but i'm gonna leave it alone i like these um grandpa topper trucks they're kind of cool definitely very period correct but the painted to match a lot of them wouldn't be that fancy. I, I didn't see, you know, unless you bought this thing right off the bat from the dealership and got the thing, you know, color matched or, you know, they'll put these on the shelves only when the trucks are made so the colors, you know. So you got a very slim chance of getting one that's kind of painted like this with the trim, but it looks really good. And it's an identical version, basically, of these. They have a blue and a green one. 118th scale with a topper and i've been debating to get that they've kind of been slow sellers they are still available they've been out for like almost a year and the 118th scale one so that's probably going to be coming soon to the collection i'm thinking well executed two-tone ford this is kind of like a caramel um brown and it's just it's good looking you know raise the um contrast a little bit or whatever it's a it's a metallic uh, i gotta bring this outside in the sun because it is metallic it's very dark inside cream center and painted to match topper deep bed so i love that so you know green light and auto world but green light they make a good deep bed like that high option truck this is 79 ford i think this is a uh what are they calling this? Nah, it's just an F-150. But it's got some trim on it. Let's go see if they did something on here. I don't know if it says custom. Yes, yeah, it's a custom. It's got these here um, alloys. So they look kind of cool. Ford had a wheel like this. It wasn't identical to this, but it was very close. So this kind of fits the bill. I think this is the only vehicle they've put these rims on so far. Green light. So just been sticking with their Ford. So they tried to do as much as they could. Making it a Ford wheel. So bumper is like excellent. Look how straight that bumper is. So this one was put together with care. Let's see if the production serial number is low. It's fairly low. It's 539. So decent. Uh, again, the etched style of um, serializing. Sometimes I'll have a sticker. I see the sticker more on the Hobby Exclusive than I do on these wider release vehicles and this is a blue collar series more recent uh series eight uh, we had we saw the jeepster actually from this series so i just haven't seen this one this one probably is probably the one that everybody wants out of that set i do have some cream paint i might fill in those little tampos errors there but this is a great one i'm glad i did pick this up finally um this is at one of the stores that charges a little bit more for green light so and they had a couple others but this was the other one so i didn't want to go too crazy because uh, you know paying three dollars more or two dollars more kind of hurts when you know you can get them cheaper so it has to be a good one you probably collectors know what i'm talking about you know you'll stretch for that one so but this is a great casting. We talked about that. Whatever the first one I ever got of these trucks, that yellow and white one. Just an amazing casting. So I'm happy to get these. I don't need to get every one. Greenlight will flood the market with all different styles of this. So you can kind of be picky and, and get what you want. You don't have to get every one because then your collection doesn't look right. To you. To me. Whoever. 
But to me, it wouldn't. I just don't want to be flooded with F-150s. I want to have special ones. So there it is. I love it. I think this will look great with some buildings. It's just a very nicely detailed vehicle. It's not a monotone one. So the two-tone cars, the cars with more graphics, sometimes do more... Um, they add more realism than just like a flat vehicle. I just like the way they look. I mean, you can see a two-tone uh, square body K5 and this one. It just adds a little more depth. So anyway... Now we're going to get to some medium-duty trucks. These are my favorite trucks, um, even more than the heavy, heavy-duty trucks. I love the medium-duty, the vocational-style vehicles, the ones doing the more short-haul stuff. So we got M2 straight trucks. We got a tractor. I think it's a C60 tractor. And then we got a C60 1984. So we got two generations to look at. I uh, finally picked up one of those green light um, medium-duty Chevys. They also make GMC, so does M2, but these happen to be Chevrolets. We'll do the 1960 first. Or 1970, sorry, not the 1960. And then we'll do the 84. So this is the Coke set out of M2. This seems to be very popular. As these were being released, Instagram blew up with this set. A lot of people like this set, so it is good. Um... And with M2, you know, you'll see the whole thing out at once, like two or three of each of these, and you know that they're going to go quick, and it's hard to, to to stop yourself. I mean, I could have got three of these, and they're about $20, <laughs> so you can go pretty crazy. You got to chill, go slow, so Coca-Cola licensing, and Coca-Cola always goes for more, even if it's like the tractor trailer style. And then the regular license, like let's say comp cams or Hearst shifters or whatever, they go for a couple dollars less. So the Coke always goes for a premium. This was just an awesome one. A lot of the Cokes were kind of like more like fake racing teams and things like that. This was like a straight up, just like a delivery truck. And it didn't come with a car. They actually added the tractor, which is a tandem unit, which is kind of funky. This is kind of like stuck out a little bit, so... I feel like I need to do a little more research on these uh, cab to axles and all these, how they set them up, and if they did do tandems, what they look like. A lot of these trucks came out as single-wheel trucks, and uh, if they were tractors, more likely they were tandem units, though, available. So I just wanted to see, this. Just all this whole thing doesn't look right to me, but it could be. Again, there wasn't many. Maybe if I chopped this off, this will look more realistic, but anyway... And this is how the cabs were. I almost feel like uh, this cab with the smaller writing would look better with the with the box truck, just because they seem to have these local distributors drive these smaller trucks, and they'll have a lot of writing there. So I might flip them. They have the older style wheels that M2 does. They're decent. They weren't too wobbly. We'll take a little. So I didn't do anything to these vehicles yet. I bought the uh, Hearst Cab Over Ford. I think it was a C600, C700, one of those trucks, C800, on the same chassis. So it had this extended uh, straight truck chassis with the with this um, box on it, which I can't tell exactly what that, how many feet that would be. Some of your truckers might know, but so I took it apart already. And I'm really desperately looking for medium-duty green light trucks, even though they're a little bit expensive, because their wheels are superior to M2s. And I'm going to be doing some wheel swaps, but I probably have. And I love these M2 chassis and bodies. So, oh, geez, I mean, I probably have about 10, 15 trucks I want to do wheel swaps to <laughs> that pile it up. Uh, I did get lucky to pass for 164-scale truck tires, uh, pickup trucks on ebay one time so i got a whole mess of those pretty cheap so i'm just holding hope that someone has a bunch of wheels that they don't need or they've made huge off-road trucks out of them or something like that where i could probably pick them up so that's what i'm hoping for i might get a couple on sale the cheapest i've seen the two axle green lights going for like the that are usually like 13 bucks i got them down to like six or seven bucks a piece online but you still gotta pay shipping so i'm just waiting these are decent. The thing about this is they have the box truck sitting really too low. They put a clearance in this part here for the wheels to ride. Uh, but what's going to need to happen is this box is going to have to come up. So probably about to, and this is one of the modifications I'm doing to the Ford, 
is you're going to bring this line up probably up to here. You're going to build this up so this there's a gap over this top wheel here, and that'll make it look more realistic. Most trucks didn't have a low-profile setup. You'd see this on like a U-Haul, uh, you know, something like that, uh, piano mover, you know, something like that. But a lot of these regular delivery trucks, they were up higher. And the other thing is they kind of rode in the back. Um, doors don't open, unfortunately. And this back deck kind of is kind of a base back deck. I almost feel like this needs to be underneath. I just don't like the way it's set up. So I'm going to change that. I might even make a fake lift gate. So these are going to take some time to fabricate, but I think they're worth it. Um, I did buy this at the attention of playing with it. I didn't want to kind of keep it in the box. A lot of M2 people do do that. They do keep them in the box, and I do understand that because they do look nice with the acrylic case. So I'm not knocking that style of collecting whatsoever, but... Them two castings are a lot of fun. They make cars that don't get done. And um, so I just love it. So they missed <laughs> another thing they did. They missed the black um, weather stripping up here. So the, the window looks totally weird. Uh, but that's it. I mean, really, the only thing it needs is mirrors. So cool truck. Got a metal chassis. So I love that. So I just love these things. And then, of course, this one. So these are 1970 C uh, 60s. I think it went to a C 70 on the medium duty line. And uh, we have the um, encyclopedia. So we'll just take a little look here. What do these truck looks like when they're brand new? Let's take a look. So we have my encyclopedia of Chevrolet vehicles. Well, trucks. So that's 1970. And I think we referenced this last time. Let's just take a look. Here we go. And you can screenshot this, but... Gas engines on this. Look at that, 427 eight cylinder. How about that? And there's some more. So, and you could see, there it is. Look at that. So, the little short axle one, and then there's their heavy duty trucks. So, I love it. Of course, the Bison or the titan the bison i think might have been the gmc there it is with some doubles so i love referencing this and there's a 1960 we're gonna look at the 1984 now truck which i think is sweet let's take a look look at these trucks for a minute so i finally got this i got this actually for 20 bucks at a um kind of like an antique place they were doing like a kind of like a fundraiser at the local watering hole or whatever they call it and uh well he had his farm stuff there so these are usually like this was a b and b exclusive so this was sold only by a few online retailers and they are typically 25 to 30 bucks so i got a pretty good deal on it now good news is is greenlight is going to be doing a main line release of this soon on their um, heavy duty, super duty, whatever series that they do, you know, or they have the Mack trucks and all that, and the step van. So they'll have this grain body actually first, and they're gonna do a propane. So they didn't do a bunch, um, and this is awesome. It has the moving parts on it, and I love the wheels. They tooled these wheels, um, the, those two piece type of truck wheels. So these look great, and they got a tall tire on them. So this would also look good with this type of truck. You know, hopefully, so this, I'll, hopefully I'll get a bunch of these, and these might be good wheel swap candidates. Um, so this is an 84 C60 grain truck. They kind of talk about this on the back, and we can look at the, the, um, the encyclopedia, but that's kind of the gist of it, and there it is, and they kind of did a picture that way. When you look at the pictures of these trucks, the fenders seem a little bit larger, uh this area here they seem to stick out a little bit more on the real trucks but it's close and they look great and they do a screw bottom with a metal chassis a lot of these green light trucks these size trucks they'll have a plastic chassis so it's nice to see it in metal i did take it apart because when i did take this first out of the package these wheels had a lot of flashing on them and on the sidewall so this thing was like jumping all over the place when you roll it so I had to do that. I had to fix that. Now, this is very hard rubber tire and vinyl, probably. 
So I did use a uh, heat gun on a low setting just to warm them up a little bit. I kept them spinning. Uh, worked fine. I did roast the mud flaps a little bit. They were very sensitive, but you can see how thin they are. Uh, it actually turned out to my favor because I feel like they look more realistic like that. I didn't like cream them. You know, I just kind of touched them a little bit with the heat. They got, they got kind of touched a little bit. So they deformed, but they kind of worked okay. But the rest of it, so the tire came off. I had to heat them up a little bit. I think next time, I'd say you don't need that much heat, but I'd just do a heat, uh, a uh, hair dryer. Probably work fine. Or put them in hot water. You can just take the base out, put them in hot water. It'll do the same thing. I just didn't want to wait, so I did it that way, and it worked fine. So I cleaned up the flashing. Now the tires work good. And in real life, there's a little wobble still, but, you know, if you ever saw these wheels, you know, if they're kind of put on hastily, you'll see, like, a wobble to them in real life, too. <laughs> so, but both of the time, I've got to do it right, they're pretty straight and narrow, but you'll see these tires a lot kind of wobbling. So it has that, and it has the hoist. So it's got your hydraulic hoist for dumping the grain, and it's cool. It's a great truck. It's got a cool wheelbase on it. It's not too short, not too long. So this would be a cool truck for doing customs work. And he had a lot of different colors, but I think the black and red kind of touched me a little bit. I think there was a funny green one and all sorts of stuff. I think the one that Greenlight's going to do, um, that they're going to produce for everybody else, not for a um, diecast dealer distributor, is um, like a blue and white one. So that's going to look quite nice, too. But this is just a cool truck. Let's take a look real quick closely at it and see if we can see any details. I love the tampa work. I did kind of wipe it down a little bit with a the microfiber. There's our side exit exhaust. Our step. So it's got good fidelity on the casting. I think it looks nice. You know, these were based off of um, these. this part of the cab. was like a pickup truck cab. And really the front and the chassis was the different part. But this was kind of... Kind of the same sheet metal. Dashes were different. Steering wheel is different. All that kind of stuff. I think the seat you sit a little different in it. But it's cool. I like that the chassis is metal and that's a screw bottom. So you can take the vehicle apart and do your thing to it. And the new new tires and wheels look nice. I think this is actually done on the Mac too. The the garbage truck I think has wheels like this. But I gotta, I haven't bought one of those yet. And there we go. Very plastic uh, grain box, but that's not too bad. This would look as good as a flatbed or a box truck or whatever. So, one of my favorite medium-duty Chevys is this one. So, I'm very excited to have this in the collection. And I think that's going to round up our cars for today and trucks. So, hope everybody enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for all the new subscriptions and all everybody's nice comments and Everybody, I hope, is enjoying our look down all these little die-cast hoods and seeing what they're all about. More to come. we got more to come. Uh, been fixing some green light stances, so we might go into how we do some of those cars that I like so much, like the Caprice and Diplomat. We've turned them around. We've made them look very nice, so maybe we'll go into that later. But I think we've talked long enough, and I hope you've enjoyed it. A lot of trucks today. A lot of trucks. Once again, thanks again for watching, all your subscriptions, more to come, till next time.